Welcome to day 26. Today's episode is brought to you by the symbol for parallel lines. Because, as you can see, today we're taking a look at the electric field between large, oppositely charged parallel plates. Now, why on earth would anyone care about the electric field between large, oppositely charged parallel plates? Well, any screen you look at, each little pixel on that screen, be it a TV set or a phone or whatever, each pixel is going to be a couple of charge plates and by changing the electric field in between those plates, uh, the plasma or the liquid or whatever it is trapped between them, well, uh, it, it changes color and that's how your picture gets produced. Now, what we're going to do for the course of this video, we are just going to take a look at this handout. Uh, you have the PDF version posted, and we're just going to go over and talk about each point in a little more detail. Uh, okay, uh, right at the top of the page there, uh, it has a typical set of large oppositely charged parallel plates and all the large oppositely charged parallel plates that we're talking about, okay, uh, when we discuss them, well, we're gonna assume that the charges on them are equal and opposite. Okay? Uh, in other words, if the top plate has a charge of positive Q, well, that means the bottom plate has a charge of negative Q. We're gonna assume that the plates are hooked up to any voltage source, like a battery or a generator or anything like that. Eventually, we'll probably throw that in, but for starters, okay, uh, no battery or anything hooked up to them. We're gonna assume that the plates are large. What do we mean by that? Well, right now, my hands would qualify as large plates. Uh, now, not so much. When we say the plates are large, we don't mean that the plates are necessarily physically big, but the distance between the plates is small or insignificant compared to the distance across the plates. And lastly, of course, the plates have to be parallel. Uh, they can't be uh, tilted toward or away from each other. Uh, and of course, uh, whatever we say today, uh, it, it applies to uh, plates that meet these characteristics. If a pair of plates, they don't meet any of those characteristics, well, then what we say might not necessarily apply. All right, speaking of characteristics, let's look at the first characteristic. Okay. Right there on your handout, it says that the electric field in between a pair of large, oppositely charged parallel plates acts in a straight line direction from the positive to the negative everywhere between the plates as long as you don't get too close to the edges. And that's kind of intuitive, right? Remember, electric field is the force on a unit of positive charge and anywhere you go in between these plates, well, the positive charges are gonna wanna push a positive charge down. The negative charges are wanna, pardon me, they're gonna wanna pull a positive charge down. So yeah, it, it seems intuitive that the electric field in between a pair of plates like this is going to be from the positive plate st straight towards the negative plate, not at any angle. Okay. Uh, well, let's just uh, prove that, even though it seems intuitive, let's prove that and see that it really is true. There is uh, a good reason for that. Okay. Here's how we can uh, prove that Yes, the electric field between a pair of plates like this is going to be straight from the positive to the negative. Uh, okay, here is, again, your typical pair of large oppositely charged parallel plates. Positive plate on top, negative plate on the bottom. And remember, we're talking about the electric field between these plates. So let's take a positive charge and throw it down in between the plates. There it is, right there, Q. And let's take a look at one of the charges on the top plate. Let's say charge A on the top plate. Okay? Out of all the charges on the top plate, all the lonely protons on the top plate, because ultimately that's what positive charges are, 
out of all the lonely protons in the top plate, let's zoom in on that one. Okay? What is this proton doing to our positive charge here? Well, you can see that this positive is going to take this positive and it's going to push it in that direction. So Fa is a charge that charge A exerts on Q. Okay? And then let's go an equal distance to the other side of Q and look at another charge, and we'll call that one charge B, and let's see what charge B is doing at Q. Well, you can see, B is positive, so it's gonna take Q, and it's gonna push it in that direction. So FB is the charge that B exerts on our charge. Uh, okay, now you gotta remember, these two charges, FA and FB, they're pretty much gonna be exactly the same, because you've got the same distances involved, the same charges involved, okay? uh, even the same angles involved. This angle here is gonna be congruent to this angle here. So these two forces, they're virtually the same, except this one's tilted one way, the other one is tilted the exact same amount in the other direction. So how about we take these two forces and split them up into components. So there's the Y component and the X component of FA. There's the Y component and the X component of FB. Remember, these are right angles here. And take a look. I'm pretty sure you'll agree with me that these two X components, they're gonna be exactly the same, but pointing in opposite directions, so, they're gonna cancel each other out. It's like they don't even exist. What's the total force on Q gonna be? Well, the total force on Q is gonna be the Y component of FA plus the Y component of FB. You add those two things together, and there is your total force on Q. And you can play this little game here we played it for these two charges. We could play it for these two charges. We could play it for uh, these two charges. For every charge you find on one side of Q, you can find another, another charge on the other side of Q to play this game with. In every single case, the X components, of the forces are gonna cancel, and your total force is gonna be straight vertical down towards the negative plane. Uh, and of course, you could also play uh, the same game with charges on the negative plate, except instead of the charges uh, pulling Q, well, the charges on the negative plate, they're going to be pulling Q. Once again, the X component of the forces are going to cancel, and you're going to be left with a bunch of Y components. In the end, the total force on some unit of positive charge is going to be straight down from the positive to the negative as long as you don't get too near the edges. If you get near the edge, okay, well, then, uh, sure, you're gonna find a charge on one side, okay, uh, but you're not gonna find a charge on the other side for the X components to cancel out. So as long as you don't get too close to the edge, uh, in a situation like this, your electric field is going to be just like this force here. Your electric field is going to be from the positive to the negative, just like that. All right, uh, we will now take a look at the next characteristic in just a quick sec. Moving on to the second characteristic now. Again, we're following along the PDF handout. Uh, the second characteristic says, the magnitude of E does not depend on the location between the plates. Again, as long as you don't get too close to the edges, no matter uh, where you go in between the plates, it doesn't matter whether you're here or here, whether you're close to the positive or close to the negative, the magnitude of E is going to be exactly the same. Uh, and again, that might be intuitive, but let's just see if we can prove that no matter where you go in between these plates, the electric field stays the same. So we're gonna take 
Uh, remember, we're talking about electric field, which is the force on the unit of positive charge. So we're going to take a couple of positive charges and throw them down in between our parallel plates here. Okay, there they are. There's one, there's another. Uh, this one landed closer to the positive plate. This one landed closer to the negative plate. So let's see what's going on with these things. First of all, the one that ended up closer to the positive plate. Okay. Now remember, all these positive charges up here, their X components are gonna cancel and all you're gonna be left with is the Y components of their forces and they're gonna add up and they're gonna give you this force right here. Okay. All these positive charges on top, they're basically taking this charge here and they're positive, it's positive, they're trying to push it down with that much force, okay? Uh, all these negatives, well, same thing. Uh, their X components cancel, all these negatives, they're gonna be taking this charge, it's positive, these are negative, and they're gonna be pulling it down with this much force. Now remember, this force, which is due to the positives, it is much bigger than this force, which is due to the negatives, because let's face it, the positive charges are much closer to Q than the negative charges. So you add up the force that the positives are exerting on Q and the force that the negatives are exerting on Q and you get the total force on Q. Okay, now let's go over here and let's take a look at this charge, which is closer to the negative plane. And we can play the exact same game, make the same kind of arguments okay, uh, over here. Whoops, this is screwed up a little bit. There we go, uh, that's better. So the positive charges, they're far away from Q, so they're gonna exert a small downwards force on Q. There it is, FP, the force due to the positive charges. The negative charges, they're very, very close to Q, so they're going to exert a large downward force on Q. Fn is the force due to the negative charges. Uh, and you can see, these two things, when you add them up, you get the same total force as you did over here. So it doesn't matter where you go in between these plates, it doesn't matter whether you're close to the positive, whether you're close to the negative, the electric field is always going to be the same. And we'll be right back in a sec to take a look at the next characteristic. Here is characteristic number three, just like it says in the handout. Uh, the electric field does not depend on plate separation. Again, as long as you don't get too close to the edge. So it doesn't matter whether the plates are really close together or a little further apart. If the plates go like this, the electric field is going to stay the same. Plate separation has nothing to do with electric field. As long as the plates aren't like this and they're not considered large plates anymore. Okay, so let's see if we can prove this. So here I've got a couple plates which are close together. Here I've got a couple plates which are much further apart. And you'll notice uh, I've plopped some positive charge down in the middle of this one. And I've plopped another positive charge down in the middle of this one. So, uh, pick a charge on this top plate, any one you like, let's say this one. Okay. So this positive charge here, A, it's gonna take you and it's gonna push it in that direction. Okay. Uh, notice we've got some angle up here. We'll call that theta because that's what we like to call angles. And this force, uh, that A exerts on Q, let's take this force and let's split it up into components, a Y component and an X component. And of course, we don't have to worry about the X component, it's gonna get canceled out by some other charge that's equidistant to Q on the other side. So the X component, we don't have to worry about it at all. It's gonna get annihilated off the face of the earth by some other charge. Uh, so what we're left with is this Y component. Okay, uh, so this is what's going on uh, with QA 
and the plates being really close together. Now, what's happening with Q and A if the plates are much further apart? Here's our charge A again, here's Q in between them, and you can see, uh, well, A is gonna take Q and it's gonna push it in this direction. You'll notice that this force is smaller than this force, and that makes sense, right? Because in this situation, Q is a big distance from A. In this situation, Q is not quite so far from A. So for that reason, this force is smaller than this force. You'll also notice that this force is tilted more downwards than this force. Of course, because as you go from uh, here to here, well, our angle theta is pretty small here, but over here our angle theta is pretty big. So this force, it's smaller than this one, but it's tilted downward more than this one. So think about those two things. The fact that this force is smaller than this one is gonna make this Y component smaller than this Y component, but the fact that this force is tilted more vertically, more downward than this one, well, that's gonna have a tendency to make this Y component bigger than this one. Okay. Uh, as a result, this Y component, uh, it is exactly the same as this Y component. Okay. And again, remember why that is. This force is smaller than this one. That tends to make this Y component smaller. This force is tilted more downward than this one. That is a tendency to make this Y component bigger. Uh, those two effects, they cancel each other out. And this Y component is the same as this one. And of course, the Y components are what determine the overall total force, the overall electric field. So yeah, it doesn't matter whether your plates are this far apart or this far apart. Okay? The electric field between them is going to be exactly the same. It does not change. Uh, okay, uh, very last characteristic. And it says the electric field is proportional to the charge on the plates. Okay. And this is a little bit different from the example on the handout. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we've got a couple large oppositely charged parallel plates. Uh, here's a positive plate with a charge Q, the negative plate with a charge negative Q. Uh, so what's the direction of the electric field in this situation? Okay, take a sec, figure that out. Uh, and of course, yeah, I'm sure you got it. The electric field is gonna be running like so. Electric field is a force on a unit of positive charge. If you throw a positive charge down in here, these negatives are gonna pull it this way. These positives are gonna pull it this way. The electric field always goes from the positive plate straight towards the negative plate, like so. Okay. Now remember, the electric field is proportional to the charge on the plates. So if this one goes up by a factor of two, and remember the charge on the plates, they have to be the same. This one is also gonna go up by a factor of two. Uh, some people might think, well, this one's gonna go up by a factor of uh, two times two is four, but no, the electric field, it goes up by a factor of two. Easy enough, right? The electric field, is proportional to the charge on the plates. Whatever happens to the charge, same thing happens to the electric field. Uh, there is a sample problem in the handout, and basically that is your assignment. Short and sweet and easy. Uh, give those few questions a try. We'll post solutions in just a bit. Uh, probably uh, on Monday, okay, those questions are really good for checking your understanding. Make sure you know exactly what we're talking about here. Uh, have a good weekend.